Welcome, Lecture Capture fans, for another fun Lecture Capture. We're going to talk about more extensions to Mendel in this Lecture Capture. I'm going to try to do half of it now and half in another one. We're going to start with some of the gene interactions. So the first extensions were allele interactions and how phenotypes changed when different alleles got together versus how complete dominance works. Remember, genotypes don't change. It's only the phenotypes when we talk about allele interactions. The same as with gene interactions. It's always the phenotype that changes, not the genotype. So when we talk about gene interactions, we're always talking about right, the effects of genes at one locus depending on genes at another locus. So we're talking about two different genes. Not two alleles, two separate genes. But in general, these are all uh, contributing to one phenotype, okay? So we have essentially two different categories. We have the categories where a gene interaction produces some new phenotype, a novel phenotype. So two genes, one phenotype, or redundancy. And then we also have gene interactions that result in epistasis, where one gene can mask the effect of another. There's three different types of that. It could be recessive epistasis, dominant epistasis, or duplicate recessive epistasis. So we're going to talk about all of these. And again, we're looking for patterns, pattern recognition, and we're looking for patterns mostly in phenotypic ratios. Right? Remember, it's all about the phenotypes for these. Okay, so again, extensions to Mendel. Just as different alleles of one gene interact, two different genes can also interact together. Again, these are the types that we're going to talk about. One called two genes, one phenotype or additive gene action. Something called complementation or complementary gene action or duplicate recessive epistasis. And then standard recessive and dominant epistasis and also redundant. So let's start with two genes, one phenotype, also known as multifactorial inheritance. Okay, an interaction between two or more genes that results in one trait. Okay, what did we learn about in the dihybrid? We talked about two different genes together, how they're inherited, but it also resulted in two traits, yellow and round, right, tall and wrinkled. In this case, it's two or more genes, in this case, two genes that result in one phenotype, seed color. Two genes, one phenotype, okay? F1, right, parental, always has to be homozygous, dominant for one, homozygous recessive for the other, or at least, you know, homozygous, homozygous. The F2 results in four different phenotypes for one trait, okay? The phenotypic ratio is 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, okay? Just like we saw for the dihybrid. But again, it's just one trait, color, not color and shape, not tall and texture or height and texture, just one single trait. So we're looking for 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio in the F2 phenotype, but if they're only talking about one thing, color or just shape, we know it has to be two genes, one phenotype, can't be anything else, okay? So that's how this one works. So if we're talking about this. Right, here we go, here's our parental, homozygous, homozygous, the F1, all the same, okay, identical, they're the heterozygote. If we stopped there and just told you brown times gray equals, or tan, sorry, tan times gray equals brown, we, what might we think of? Incomplete, right, 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 the F1 looks like neither, how do we know it's not this? How do we know it's not incomplete dominance? Actually, up to this point, we can't tell. We have to look at the F2. What's the F2 ratio for incomplete dominance? Yep, 1 to 2 to 1. So if you have tan times gray equals brown, brown times brown gives you a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of tan, gray, and brown, we know it's incomplete dominance. In this case, we get tan to gray gives us all brown. In the F2, we get 9 brown, 3 tan, 
three gray, and another phenotype, green. It's nine to three to three to one ratio for one single trait, color. So we know it can't be a dihybrid with two traits because we're only talking about one trait. We know it can't com be incomplete dominance because otherwise we would have gotten one to two to one. Has to be this two genes, one phenotype because we get nine to three to three to one, four phenotypes of one trait. Again, pattern recognition, 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, except we're only talking about one thing, color. Only talking about one thing, shape. Only talking about one thing, height. Not two traits, just one. So if you're looking at these and you would like to understand it, the dominance relationships amongst these F2 phenotypes is tan has to be dominant to green, right? Here's green is always the number one. Right, the double recessive is always the number one. Okay, so tan here obviously is dominant to green. Gray here is dominant to green. And brown is dominant over gray, green, and tan. Okay, as it turns out, both tan and gray are incompletely dominant to each other, right here, giving us brown. 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, 1 phenotype. Okay, let's take a look at this problem and answer the questions. Take a screenshot and upload to uh, ask number something. Ask number 8. It's also labored. Labored? It is kind of laboring. Homework peppers. Okay. Please work through this problem. Is this normal Mendelian dihybrid or is it additive gene action? How do you know? Please answer this question. What is the probability of getting this guy in the F2? Mm -hmm. What's the phenotype of this guy? Work on this, take a screenshot, and upload. All right, let's talk about another type of interaction called epistasis. So stay tuned for another lecture capture, and I'll be right back. Thanks, guys.